Welcome everyone to the L7C podcast. This is the L7C here and today we are going to give the review of Wonder Woman 1984 aka Wonder Woman 2. This is the second movie following the box office hit of the first Wonder Woman movie that came out in 2017 and this is still all part of the DC extended universe the DECU DCEU I'm sorry so this is the next installment in that and this movie takes place in 1984 this is years after World War One. if you do remember in the first Wonder Woman movie we are last seen with Diana at the end of World War One. The U.S. won thanks to her and Steve Trevor's group. And Steve Trevor dies at the end of Wonder Woman. And that was the first man that she ever met, ever loved. So now we see what she's doing decades later after that. The movie starts. Uh, you've, they've released this part onto YouTube and all the internet. It starts with young Diana doing a competition. And long story short with that, she tries to take the easy way to win. And she is stopped from doing that by um, her mom uh, she and her aunt to lecture her on the importance of truth. Diana thought it didn't matter because she was going to win. But they were telling her the importance of truth because no hero is born from lies and that's going to be the theme of this movie then we jump to 84 and wonder woman she's working as a senior anthropologist in dc and she's specializing in culture because she's an amazon and she's about the culture and she's still fighting crime in the area as wonder woman but she tries to make it that there's no footage in the beginning, when you see her fighting crime in the mall, first thing she does is get a tiara, knocks off all the cameras. So there's no pictures of her fighting crime. So she keep, she gets to keep that double life. And then at work, she meets Barbara and Minerva. She's played by Kirsten Wig, And she is the women, woman who's insecure, you know, in those movies where you have Women who over, get overlooked, uh, they're not seen as pretty, nobody gives them a second eye, and those two meet, and Diana's the first person to really talk to Barbara, so she starts to idolize and envy Diana for her beauty and her confidence, and then they become friends. So, with that being said, they're the two main players in this thing. The third main player is Maxwell Lord, and he is played by Pedro. If you know who he is, he is the Mandalorian. So the three main players in this movie is obviously Diana, Barbara, and Maxwell. When Diana stopped the robbery, she brings some artifacts back to where she works with Barbara, and she asks them to review them. And they find this, they find this uh, stone... Uh, it's called, we'll call it the Dream Stone. And the Dream Stone is what Maxwell comes to Barbara and Diana's work to find because he's been looking for it for years. And it's something that you make any dream, you wish for anything, and you can get it to happen. First, when Diana and Barbara are looking at it, they're just joking because they don't think it's real. Diana wishes that. Her boyfriend, Steve Trevor, could be back from the dead spending time with her. And Barbara wishes for more confidence. She wants to be strong and beautiful like Diana. So going from that point on, Maxwell starts to talk to Barbara, invites Barbara to a gala at his office shop. So it was basically to rule her in so that he can get the dream stone so that he can make a wish because he is a failing oil company man and he wants to be successful. He wants to be respected. A lot of what normal businessmen wish to do. When Maxwell Lord does get the stone, he which is to actually be the embodiment of the stone. So now Maxwell, this failing oil rig man, has the power to grant wishes while also able to take whatever he desires in return. 
because the part of the dream stone is you can wish something, but then it takes something away from you. So keep going from that. Throughout the movie, Maxwell starts becoming more and more powerful, but his body's starting to die while leaving chaos and destruction. He's going around. He goes to Simon Stagg, who was just a minor character in this movie, but he's a, he's a player in D.C. He wished for him to lose everything, and Maxwell was going to take it. And Maxwell slowly starts to build. Diana wakes up one day, and she's at this gala before uh, Maxwell gets the stone. And she sees Steve Trevor. Steve Trevor is brought back, but he's in someone else's body. So that's a weird dichotomy because it was brought back the dream. So I know in the first trailers, we were all wondering, how is Steve Trevor back from the dead? And now we know it's through the Dreamstone. And Barbara starts to realize, because she had a thing at the beginning where she couldn't walk in heels. But then now she's able to walk in heels. She's more agile. There's a scene where she's at her home and she pulls down. She just opens the fridge and tears down the whole door. She goes to the gym and is lifting significantly more weight than whatever she could do. So she is starting to be like Diana. Diana and Steve realize this is not okay. They need to try and figure it out. And then they find out that this stone from reading the God text was written by a god of treachery and mischief. Uh, The stone does grant people wishes, but like we said earlier, it takes it as a toll. And the only way to reverse the exchange is by renouncing the wish or destroying the stone itself. During the fight scenes, once Steve comes back, Diana starts to get severely weaker. And when they find this part out, Steve realizes that since he's back, Diana's losing her strength. She doesn't want to beat Maxwell if it means Steve leaving. Barbara doesn't want Maxwell dealt with if it means her losing her abilities. So then we have Steve, who is a man in another man's body, the only one speaking common sense, saying, hey, it needs to be done. You need to get rid of me. So they're trying to find alternative sources. And then Maxwell Lord is just going across the world, going, um, getting all the oil, becoming the biggest name in oil, having millions of people admire him, want to make grant their wishes so he can get something back. And then the heart of Maxwell's thing is his son, Alistair, who Maxwell wants his son to acknowledge him, respect him, things of that nature. Because his son was in the meeting where Simon Stagg called Maxwell a loser. And he doesn't want his son to see him as a loser. So Maxwell, they catch, they catch him at the White House. We're just skipping through before we get to some things. But just the big parts of this movie. I'm trying to be focused on the important stuff. So Maxwell is in, the watch in D.C. at the president's house. And he obviously asked the president what he wants to wish for. He wants more nuclear missiles than Russia. And Maxwell finds out that the United States is working on telecommunication thing to talk to the whole world, if absolutely necessary. This gives Maxwell his in and out to reach everyone in the world and basically become the most powerful person in the world. Diane and Steve get to the White House. They're fighting off security. They're about to stop him. And Barbara actually jumps in and stops them from stopping Maxwell because she does not want to give up her wish. So Diana and Barbara fight in the White House. Diana, obviously, because Steve's still there, she's significantly weaker than what she usually is. Barbara beats her up pretty bad, pretty bad. So when Steve is carrying... Diana out of the White House. The world's just going crazy. It's at the point where it's almost thermonuclear war. People are robbing from each other, killing each other. Steve tells Diana, in order to get her powers back, she needs to let him go. She really does not want to, but she knows it's the right decision. So Diana renounces her wish and then gains all of her strength back, and Steve is gone. 
forever for the foreseeable future because he goes back to the afterlife. So when Diana gets her powers back, she goes and gets the legendary armor worn by Asteria, who was the greatest Amazon of all time because she protected all the Amazons from man, let them leave so that the Amazons can live a better life. And Diana had her armor. If you've seen the commercials where at the end of the Wonder Woman commercial, she's in that gold armor. She brushes off the wings. That is the legendary Amazon armor of Asteria. So then Diana's get into the place where Maxwell's at. And Barbara, who wanted to be more, as she was wishing for more, she became... Because she wanted to be being pure rage after wishing to become an apex predator. She becomes Cheetah. Diana and Barbara, with Diana full strafe, they fight. Diana's trying so hard to get Barbara to renounce her wish. And Barbara's like, nope. And then Barbara gets electrocuted in the water. And that's the end of her. She loses. As Diana goes to confront Maxwell... She's trying to get him to stop. She keeps twirling her lasso of truth, trying to get him to tell the truth, to stop, to see what he's doing. He's like, why would I not want why why would I not want more? It's almost a thing that everyone, every human wants more. And it's just seen in this circumstance to a higher degree because you want more, but you don't want to hurt others. Maxwell is wanting more, and he's literally destroying the world. As he is wanting more. It's looking like U.S. is shooting nuclears at Russia. Russia is shooting nuclears at the U.S. It really looks like the world's about to end. Then by the sliver of her lasso, she was able to get her lasso on Maxwell's ankle. And she was able to communicate with the world through him. And, you know, Wonder Woman's the beacon of truth, of hope, of thinking of a better day trying to get everyone in the world to renounce their wishes. And while Maxwell is trying to fight this, he sees his son, Alistair, wandering the streets where the world's about to end. So he, when he sees his son, that's when he's like, okay, I've done a lot of bad things. I want to renounce my wish of having all these powers. And he goes and gets his son. And with him renouncing his wish, they averted global nuclear war. And then it's Christmas at the end, and Diana sees the body that Steve was embodied in, talks to him for a bit, and it's a it's basically a happy ending. And there's more small bits and things that I'm about to go over, but that's the premise of the main story. So just to go with the cast, Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman. That will always, to me, be Zack Snyder's best thing he's ever done in comics casting Diana, uh, Gal Gadot as Diana Prince. I couldn't see anyone playing her besides Gal Gadot. So that is kudos to Zack Schneider for picking her all the way back in 2013. That's the best thing he's done for DC. Obviously, you had Chris Pine playing Steve Trevor back from the dead just in this instance. You had Kirsten Wig playing Barbara Minerva, Cheetah. And a lot of people didn't even realize that Cheetah is Wonder Woman's arch nemesis or rival. You have Superman Lex, Batman Joker, Flash Reverse Flash. You have Diana and the Cheetah. There, That is their pairing, and so I was glad for the world to actually see that on the big screen. And then you had Pedro Pascal's Maxwell Lorenzano, Maxwell Lord. He was just a businessman. He was falling at the end, meet. He wanted to be successful. He was looking for this stone and who wouldn't want to look for this stone if you could if there was really a stone in the real world that could grant you any wish wouldn't you want to look for it as well so with diana also the cool things in this movie with her showing steve what it's like in 1984 just think about if you've seen the marvel movies when captain america woke up in the 20th century just getting accustomed to that now you see diana doing the same thing for steve showing him what's going on in 1984 that people can go to space there's break dancing there's parachute pants you can get on a plane and go from a to b in a day like steve is learning all those things so that was the cool thing seeing their interaction i think gal and chris pine really have a good connection 
with each other. And then even with Gal and Kirsten Wig, their interactions were great too, as the starting off of becoming friends, and then once Descent to Darkness, then becoming your arch enemy in that. So those relationships were good. And Maxwell, like I said, he just embodies what anyone would want to see in themselves at the point, well, not see as themselves, but We've all been there where we've wanted more, and Maxwell embodies that. So going forward with this story, there's a couple of things where if you watch the movie, you see when everyone's renouncing their wishes, you don't see Barbara renounce her wish. They show a shot of her, but she never verbally says she renounces her wish. So she could still be Cheetah. And this movie happens in 1984. Obviously, we've seen Wonder Woman in the present time, and BVS and Justice League. So it'll be interesting to see if Wonder Woman 3, which Patty Jenkins has already stated that she already has an idea or stuff written up, if Barbara comes back because she's not dead and she didn't renounce her wish. If you watch the movie, just check that point because she does not renounce her wish. Also, with Maxwell Lord, you would assume that he dies over time, but he also was not put in jail for his crimes, because how can you really prove that? There was no scene shown with that saying, oh, this guy almost made the world blow up because of wishes. So those were two interesting things to see going forward. And then this movie does have the end credit scene. Spoilers. You see an Amazon walk in down the street. Well, you don't know it's an Amazon, but a she just saves some people and you're just like is that diana and then you turn around and it's not diana it's actually asteria the greatest amazon of all time the woman that wonder woman was wearing her armor in the real world and everyone thought and everyone them scared thought she was dead they have a statue of her and you find out the person playing asteria is linda carter the original Wonder Woman. You find out she is just living among humanity in secret, very much like Diana. And that's a very cool thing that the crew at DC and them did. Finding a role for Linda Carter, the original OG Wonder Woman, to be in the DC EU as Asteria, the legendary Amazon, to keep her legacy going on. So that was a really, really cool thing. In terms of superhero movies, you always think of fight scenes, things like that. There was a couple of fight scenes. The first one was in the mall, Wonder Woman stopping robbers. Then you have Wonder Woman and them fighting in Saudi Arabia. That's basically a car chase. And then you have Wonder Woman and Steve fighting in the White House. And then you have Wonder Woman and Cheetah at the end fight scene. In terms of fight scenes, to compare it to the first movie, because I think the first movie... This fight, No Man's Land, is one of the best scenes that have come out in recent memory of her walking up, blocking the bullets, and her and them all fighting together in World War I. I don't think any scene compares to that. I think that was pretty hard to top. But in terms of when you go to the third act with Wonder Woman versus Ares and Wonder Woman 1 or Wonder Woman versus Cheetah and Wonder Woman 2, definitely take Wonder Woman versus Cheetah. In over Wonder Woman vs. Ares, Ares, I felt there was too much CGI, and she really wouldn't, she wouldn't have beat him if Steve didn't sacrifice herself because that unlocked some of her powers. So this one with Wonder Woman and Cheetah, although short, I wish it was a lot longer and more dialogue. They got to it pretty busy, nice and quick. So it's always good to see mono a monos go at it. With this movie being said, having the pushback, obviously because of COVID. I was able to see it in theaters. Theaters are open where I'm at, and they're doing very great safety precautions. Uh, they blocked off some seats to put space between people. There's hand sanitizer going up. There's the social distance stickers. They encourage you to buy your tickets online. That's what you do. You buy them online now. When you do concessions, you buy them in the store, you no, know, online, and then you pick it up in the stores just so to limit contact. So Marcus Theaters did a great job on that. And man, it felt good to be back in a theater watching a superhero movie. Like It just felt good because we haven't had the chance to really do that all this year in 2020. And on Christmas Day, being able to watch Wonder Woman, an iconic 
figure, one of the greatest superheroes of all time in theaters, felt fantastic. But this movie wasn't without flaw. There was a little puff and stuff that I don't think needed to be seen. There was at the movie point where where Barbara's going into slowly into a descent of Cheetah. She's walking, and one of these guys who harassed her earlier in the movie that Diana saved her from, she sees him again, and she beats the crap out of him. And another homeless guy who she was friends with just noticed that that's not you. Like That was her descent. But her biggest thing is she didn't want to feel powerless again. So you have three people... Wonder Woman, the hero, Maxwell, and Cheetah, the villains, who all embody something that all of us feel almost every day. Cheetah didn't want to feel powerless. She didn't want to be ignored. She wanted people to know she's alive. Maxwell wanted to be successful. He wanted his son to love him, acknowledge him. Wonder Woman wanted one more chance with someone that she loved. If you put all those emotions... Who doesn't want those things? Who doesn't want that last chance with a family member who passed away or a lover or a friend? Who doesn't want to be respected and have all the power? And who doesn't want to, who wants to be ignored? Nobody wants to be ignored. You want people to acknowledge you. So I felt like they really hit those main things. Don't watch it for the action. Watch it for the action, obviously. Watch it if you love Wonder Woman, but pay attention to those things because it really begs the question, if this stone was real in our real world right now, what lengths would you go to get it? Would you pay that price? If it's a simple question like paying off debt, but you lose some material possession or this, or you want to be the most famous person in the world, but then you lose your closest friends. Would you do that for this stone if the stone was real or not? That's a question I want to throw at you guys. Leave your um, answers, comments below, wherever you listen. But to be honest, that's what Wonder Woman was. Wonder Woman 1984 was a good movie. It was not better than the first one, in my opinion, even though there was better villains. The Maxwell and Cheetah were better villains than Ares. That's hands down. But I just felt like the action of Wonder Woman won. And the direct story was better in that than it was in Wonder Woman 2. Just felt like it was like, eh, some cheesy stuff, some cornball stuff. But it was perfect for what is happening right now in the world. So that cheesy stuff was needed. But Wonder Woman 1 was better than Wonder Woman 2. And that's really all I have to say on that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about Wonder Woman 1984. There's some other small things also. Wonder Woman learned how to fly because of Steve Trevor. You finally get to see the invisible jet on the big screen, even though we don't know if she's keeping that or not. So we got to see more Wonder Woman lore, but eh, could wish we would have saw the jet more because that was cool. That's a big Wonder Woman thing. And Steve teaching her how to fly was a cool thing as well. So no matter if she's flying in the air, she's going to always have Steve with her. So those are cool things. Let us know what you think of Wonder Woman 1984 comments down below again thank you for listening to the l7c podcast you guys take care thank you for listening to this episode of the l7c podcast be sure to like rate review and subscribe to the channel follow us on all social media platforms and we'll be talking to you guys soon take care